Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Ducks of Gaming and a new video on the channel with another self-sustaining Atlas strategy that needs no TFT involvement and no compasses. This is one that I released a few leagues ago that I titled the Dad Atlas Strat because it was designed to be a strategy that you can just log in, do for a couple of hours with not needing any setup time whatsoever. So I thought I'd have a look at it, polish it up a bit and then re-release it for 322 and just give it a test. And in the test that I've done, I made about 11 divans profit per hour and around 110 chaos per map. We'll dive into where the profit came from in a moment. So before people jump onto the comments, which happens on all of my Atlas strategy videos, and tell me I could get XYZ by using this compass or running A bomb maps or doing this and that, this strat is deliberately designed to not have to spend time setting up. I'm aware there is ways to tweak this, get it more optimal with purchasing certain things and using certain strategies. But if I can make 10 divines an hour on a strategy, I'm happy with that, especially if I don't have to go um, and buy lots of items because I have very limited playtime. You basically only need seven to eight maps to get you started to make sure you don't run out, some rusted scarabs and some raw chaos. So before we look into the strategy, we'll look at the loot first and value and then we'll do a map showcase. I like to get this stuff out of the way first as it will give you an idea as to whether it's to your liking and then it saves you watching the rest of the video if it's not for you. There's a few things when we go over the items that I've taken out. So I dropped an unnatural instinct, I dropped a voidborn key and I dropped the harvest memory beast. So I've removed all of these because they're very expensive and they're pretty rare drops. The only drop I did keep was an iron art sacred grove as at some point you are going to get a big drop. So you don't want to exclude all of them, but you don't maybe want to include if you know you've been super lucky, you don't want to include all your drops because it's kind of misrepresenting how much you're going to get back from the strategy. You will get some big items drop because of the pack size we get in the maps and the quantity and rarity increase that we get from taking the top hat. So we're going to the loot. I have taken out any maps that I started with. So I started with eight maps. So I've taken those out of the tab. So that any maps that are in here are profit. So because of that, I haven't included uh, map cost because they're all just self-sustaining themselves. So they don't really need to be included in the cost of the strategy because you don't have to buy them because you're over-sustaining. Um, as I say, I've taken out all of the big drops other than this one memory here. And then I've upgraded all of my essences to deafening and shrieking where I could just to make it a bit easier to sell and a bit easier to track the currency. Um, so this is from 56 maps. So we've got 6,269 chaos. And the cost of the strategy was about 450 chaos because we're running 56 maps. And that essentially comes down to all of your scarabs, which is just over 220C. Essence on the map device every time at 2C. And then chisels, scours and outs I've put at about 2C per map. But overall, pretty low investment and it's something that's easy to buy. You just go on to trade, go to someone who's selling 150 scarabs in bulk for a chaos and you buy them. And as you can see, most of the loot is very, very easy to liquidate. It's either going to be essences, which you can either bulk sell on trade. You can use harvest to change them into more expensive essences. Or if you wanted to and you wanted to use TFT, just go on and bulk sell them. But I tend to just use the ones I want, sell the big ones on trade. And then the small amounts I've got, I'll just wait until I've got more. You've obviously got your Harvest Life Force, which sells super easy just on trade in bulk. Same with your invitations. Your memory will sell straight away. Same with the Sacred Blossom. So things like Fusings, once you get enough of them, you're going to be able to sell them. Um, and Makings again, over a Chaos each. And Kindling Orbs again, pretty decent currency for people wanting to roll um, Maze Blood Flask. Everything is very easy to sell, which is why I like the strategy. So rather than a map showcase, there's going to be footage in the background kind of showing how to do the strategy. And I'm just going to talk about what you need to do to make sure you're maximizing your returns on this sort of strategy because if you don't do everything correctly it could be that you are 30 percent down on your income so let's talk about how to run the strategy firstly chisel and elk all of your maps and do it in bulk and then re-roll any maps that you cannot run if you do this in one big batch of maps it means that's your setup done set all your favorites bar one to city square and then the last one to crimson temple crimson temple maps can either be used to sell or if you somehow get super unlucky and run out of maps you can run your crimson temples but you should easily sustain your city squares you need four rusted scarabs but for speed load up your map device with 40 of them and they can all be the same type you need two chaos for the essence mod now with the tree that we take you're going to get harvest in two out of your three maps which is why we're not forcing it on you can take seventh gate to make sure that you can actually put harvest on the map device for 12c but it's really not worth it when we're getting it for free in two out of three maps in most maps, you're going to get four essences because of blocking and extra essence nodes on the tree. Take remnants of corruption with you. You're going to self-sustain these, so don't worry about being strict on using them. 
The essences you want to use them on are any purple essences because these can change into the special essences which are worth more or essence patches where there's four or more essences and at least three of them are shrieking and one of them is screaming. Your goal here is to upgrade the tiers so that you get lots of deafening essences and they're then duplicated because your screaming essence gets pushed up to shrieking. Once you're into the map, run straight to the middle, that's where the boss is. Once you kill him, it means no boss altars can spawn, so you get a better selection of minion altars. Then you just circle around the outside of the map, killing all the monsters, and then collecting and corrupting essences. If your element immune and have burning ground immunity, there's a couple of altars to look for. There's monsters drop burning ground and monsters inflict scorch. These sometimes add player quantity and rarity, so these are going to make your harvest better. They have no detriment to your build, and you'll end up getting more currency out of the map. When you finished it, go in, do the harvest if one has appeared, prioritize yellow life force over blue or purple, and then just leave the map and rinse and repeat. Once you get going, you're going to be doing these fairly, fairly quickly, and you will notice your currency start to really stockpile. So let's have a look at the Atlas tree. Before I do, I just want to go through how I look around Atlas strategies and how I decide what I want to farm for those strategies. And it's really just looking at what kind of get into the map easier for me. Can I do it quickly? Because that's quite important for me as well. And what's the market like for these items? And that's the reason I've gone for Harvest specifically and then Essence because it's so easy to do. Cost two chaos and you will always come out of the map with a lot more money than you invest into it. And Harvest at this point of the league is just such good value. For a lot of the league, Yellow Life Force is worth currency and the rest are kind of two to three times as cheap. So if you don't get Yellow Life Force, it almost feels like you're wasting your map, which is why lots of people will go for specific compasses and just target that Yellow Life Force. But if we look at the cost of Life Force, in bulk for Yellow, it's around 3,700 Yellow for one Divine. The purple is 5,600 for one Divine. And the blue is 5,600 for one divine, possibly even less than that. So no matter what color you get, you're going to be making decent currency. Yes, you'd rather pick up yellow because it is more profitable. But the difference between yellow, purple and blue is much less than in previous leagues. Normally, there's always one that's just a really big outlier and it might be eight to 9,000 life force for a blue or a purple and then they go down from there. But at least this way, we don't have to necessarily take specific compasses to make sure we get more of a certain color because whatever color we get is going to be decent currency and um, you'll see when we go into the tree that we are blocking purple and blue just to get more yellow because it is more profitable but outside of that we're not doing anything to really determine what color life force we get drop the other thing is the altar currency so if we have a look at greater eldritch embers and let's say we had 40 of them to sell they go for a divine for about 67 of them, which is pretty insane. Or you can sell them in bulk yourself for around three and a half chaos. The grands, again, really profitable. They're sort of 17 for a divine. And then you get things like sextants, which are insane money. They're sort of 40, I think, for a divine. 39. And then orbs of Amakins, more than a chaos. Loads of things drop from those altars that are worth money. And they're very, very easy to sell in bulk. So let's go over the tree. There'll be a link in the video description. I will just say we are over sustaining maps quite a bit on this strategy so you might be able to drop some of the map nodes the reason i say that it might be worthwhile dropping these three nodes here and taking baptized by fire because you get a 10 percent chance on your proccing your influence that it gives you an extra prop so it essentially means you're only doing 24 to 25 maps to get your invitation over 28. i think that's probably worth it because i think you're going to sustain without this so an Atlas Trina video description, it will have Baptized by Fire. If you're finding you are slightly struggling with sustain, you can just go back to shaping the world. So the Atlas strategy revolves around harvest, blocking, growing hordes, and then map modifier effect. We're taking all of the essence nodes and all of the harvest nodes. What will happen with this tree is in nearly every map, you're going to get four essences at a time when you're adding essence on the map device. And you're going to get harvest in 66% of your maps, which is two out of three. That's the reason I'm not going and opening up the gateways so that I can put it on the map device of 12C. Because I actually think you lose money because you can have it for free every two out of three maps. Now, yes, it means you can free up some chance to get harvest nodes. Like you could free up these and take something else. But I think overall, this just works really well. If we were buffering this up with compasses and things like that, then you obviously would want to guarantee that you get your harvest. So you may go and take the seventh gate. Um, to get harvest on the map device but really for this i haven't felt it 
necessary and I'm making plenty of profit without it. I think it's optional whether you come down here. There is a 5% chance to get the Sacred Grove though, so I think it's worthwhile doing. And I'm blocking purple and blue, but you don't have to. I just like to get more yellows because they're slightly more currency. But as we've gone through, all of the Harvest Life Force is worth decent currency. We're taking this middle wheel to get quantity and rarity. And then I'm taking part of this wheel as well to get some more quantity. We're taking Light of Dawn for a chance to spawn an Exile Altar. We're taking Word of Exarch along with the pack size nodes. And we're taking Wrath of the Cosmos. And then outside of that, it is just all of the Essence nodes, all of the map nodes, and then all of the Harvest nodes. And it's as easy as that. It's a very, very simple tree, but it turns around good currency. And I think it works really well as just an, an Alk and Ghost strategy where really all you have to buy is Rusted Scarabs. Like I said, this isn't the most optimal strategy if you're looking to earn currency, but it's a very simple one that you can do if you've only got, say, an hour, an hour and a half to play. You don't want to have to spend time um, buying compasses buying specific scarabs in big bulk you just want to get mapping i think this works really really well next thing i'll go over is just talk very quickly about what sort of build you need to do this strategy uh, the problem with my video and a lot of other videos is they might have a build that's 400 to 500 divines that can do any at the strategy that they want but it might be that your character just cannot complete that content it is a mapping strategy so you do need a mapping character a slow bosser that has no clear speed is not going to suit this sort of strategy but if you have a half decent mapping build, you should be fine. You need a fair chunk of single target because you're going to need to take down essences, which can get some horrible mods on them. And you don't want to spend time killing harvest monsters. You want to be obliterating them as quickly as you can. Along with that, you want either quick movement speed or a movement skill that can get you across the map nice and quickly. Because the quicker you're in and out of these maps, as with any other strategy, the more currency you're going to be earning. Defense wise, you don't need a ton. I don't have any fizz mitigation at all. I just have evasion and I very, very rarely die in these maps. But there might be one where you get tough mods. They get increased by the top hat and you get a horrible essence monster that takes a while to get down. You might take the odd death. It's not a risk-free strategy, but it is something that most builds should be able to do. As long as you're not running around with 2.5k life and no layer of defenses, you should be fine with this strategy. And then finally, we'll just go on to the pros and the cons. So the pros I've already outlined. It's very easy to set up. You do not have to interact with TFT. You don't have to use compasses. All you need is a big, big chunk of rusted scarabs and you are good to go. The loot that you drop is very easy to sell in bulk for divines and you won't drop a huge array of different things. You're essentially going to drop the currency from the altars, which will be things like sextant and all of I'm making. You're going to drop the eldritch currency, which is very easy to sell. You're going to drop maps which if you wanted to you could sell your excess maps you're going to drop your invitations and you're going to get harvest life force and essences essences if you want to do it easily you would sell it on tft or just level them all up to deafening see what they sell for divines and just wait until you get divines worth and list them up they'll sell really comfortably and finally the map completion time for a character that's quick is pretty reasonable on average take into account you don't always get harvest i'm running these maps in about two and a half minutes even if you were three to three and a half minutes per average, it's quite a nice time to be in a map. You can earn more and you can really juice your maps, but maybe spend 10 to 15 minutes in a map. That's not what I like to do. I like to turn them over really quickly. And for me, it suits the strategy. It also means because of that, if you've only got an hour to play, for example, in the evening, you can go in, buy your scarabs, take a couple of minutes doing that, and then just run 15 or 20 maps, whatever it is, stash your loot, and then you carry it on tomorrow. It's not something where you have to set up a very complicated strategy and then have to try and remember where you were um, when you log in to do your next hour session. And now on to the cons. If you have a ton of currency, you like very complex at the strategies with buying lots of supplies, you're going to be able to make a lot more currency than this. I would say at the moment, every strategy should be eight divines plus. If you're not making eight divines, I would say there's either something really fundamentally wrong with the strategy or you're just not doing the maps quick enough and there's too much downtime. You could earn three to four divines more per hour on specific strategies if that's what you wanted to do. I'm no way selling this as the best strategy in the world. It's just something I enjoy doing, so I thought I'd release it in case other people like doing it as well. Uh, second con is it isn't going to suit every build, as with most strategies, to be honest. You do need to be quick. You need decent single target and clear, and you need at least some layer of defenses to either evade or block. And then the only other thing to look out for is not a con, but just keep an eye on market values. If, for example, you are looking at this video in three weeks time and 
the harvest life force is suddenly nowhere near as profitable no one's buying essences and all of the exile currency is tanked it's obviously going to make this strategy less profitable so instead of being 10 to 12 divines an hour it might be six to eight so it's something you need to bear in mind uh, so that's really it for the overview so very quickly we will just summarize how you run this strategy in terms of setup and as i've already explained it is one map chisel and elk you need some scarabs it doesn't matter what they are just pick ones up just make sure they're not divination they're not fine stick them in your map device chisel out your map make sure you can run it put it in serenex arc influence essence take some remnants of corruption and that's it run the map do your harvest last corrupt any essences you think could bring extra profit and then you just rinse and repeat roll your maps in bulk to make it easier and then just get yeah, map for however long you want that is it for the video thank you very much for watching take care and see you in the next one